right, everyone, we're going to begin our session now. I want to thank everyone here in New York and online for attending. You guys can all hear okay in New York here? And I assume online as well. This is exciting for us. We have quite a few great speakers today. Um, we have Terry Keene from ISIS come up to talk to you about some of what our choices in the marketplace are going to be. We have Steve Fire from IBM with us as well, Powering Your Planet. Um, I want to thank ISO for helping us put this together. Mike Carroll has a couple announcements for you. And then we're going to have Jeff Garbus be speaking about our top server configuration tips for ASC 15. We'll be going to a questions and answers session online uh, as well as here. So I want to thank everyone again. And we're going to be inviting Terry Keene up to start things off. Well, greetings and thanks for joining us. A gorgeous Friday. What the heck we're doing? We should be out playing. Um, we talked about a lot of interesting stuff today, but it's mostly focused around Sybase ASE and a lot around ASE 15 because we've uh, we run into a lot of folks who are struggling a bit getting either AS12 to AS15 done or getting AS15 to work really well once it is. So uh, Jeff's going to give us some really good insights into how that works. The nice thing about MLogic is all the guys who work for MLogic are the guys that did all this stuff for Sybase. And they realize they can go off and do this and make more money. So uh, they start MLogic and they do a great job. Um, what I'll talk about is uh, a lot more exciting. <laughs> Hardware. <laughs> and I know that's not exciting to you guys, but I'm sorry. I love this stuff. I, um, I go up basically as a W. I was a W when I was six years old. Um, I wrote my first program then on a GE 225 in BASIC in 1966. I was just turning six. And um, I think that's right. And, uh, and I've been doing hardware ever since, and I love this stuff. So you're going to have to bear with me. But the reason that I do this is because, quite frankly, down to two architectures in the marketplace. That's all that's left. And I say that to people, and they say, well, that can't possibly be true. Yeah, Jock, it, it is true. I'll tell you a little bit about us. Well, let me tell you about us. Mm. We're ISIS, Integration Systems. We are an IBM business partner. Um, we've been doing this for about eight years. Before just doing consulting, flying around the world, talking to people about, uh, about the world of technology and where where technology was going and, and uh, what they should expect and trying to add a little bit of common sense to the world. <laughs> and you see how it works. This is that Intel Windows stuff. <laughs> I have to apologize for Bill Gates. He hasn't gotten it right yet. And he's been at it a long time. Have you thought about that, how long he's been working at this? So that changes. Nope, that one doesn't change it. Yeah. Which which button changes, Jeff? Changes what? Okay. This one? Uh, the one to the right. The right-hand button. Okay. So, uh, we're ISIS. We do primarily IBM systems from Intel all the way up to just short of the mainframe. Um, and storage and those kinds of things. And we're Unix guys. You should know that about us. We're Unix guys. We're Linux guys, but we're Unix guys. They're pretty much the same thing now. Um, you should understand that Unix guys don't do Windows. In fact, we've all decided to move to Macintosh just to get away from Windows, but of course you have to run Windows on Macintoshes, right? We've done a lot of work in this marketplace with uh, a lot of different companies. Um, most of them are for optimizer infrastructure, and that's kind of what we do the most. Um, but for the most part, it's been, it was, up until about four or five years ago, on the enterprise side. So we work with databases, we work with SAPs, we work with the people soft we worked with, uh, Oracle Financials, it was kind of that, that sort of thing. And about five years ago, IBM came to us and said, would you guys be interested in coming to New York and getting us into the equity side of the financial markets, the capital side? And we said, absolutely. So really involved in uh, the capital space. And part of that is Sybase, because as you probably know, Sybase has a very dominant position in the capital markets on Wall Street. And uh, so we, we formed this alliance with Sybase and started working with them and, and doing
doing some very interesting things ever since. But the most interesting thing is we've been helping companies get off of old technology onto new technology. What do I mean by old technology? Sun. <laughs> I mean, what else can I say? It's gone. I don't know if you're aware of that. Sun's gone. So when I tell people these are the choices you have, I kind of stretch it. Um, AT is still around, and they're doing a great job on the Intel side. Unisys, to put them up there because we helped them redo their entire uh, design um, pro strategy. I told them not to do what they're doing. That's how well I did as a consultant. And um, Group Bull, I put them up because they have a soft spot in my heart. They sell IBM boxes in France. Did a lot of work with Bull over in France. So I put them up there because they're good guys. Dell I put up there only because everybody recognizes the name. I, I don't call them a computer company. They're actually a supply chain company. Uh, but one of the things they push through their supply chain is computers, so you have to credit for that. You know, Dell is the only company on the planet that can deliver anything on the entire continent of Africa in 48 hours. Supply chain company, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And then, of course, there's Sun, although it's not Sun Microsystems anymore, is it? It's Oracle Microsystems. Right? That's the other choice, but they're running out of things to do. They're running out of technology. They're running out of direction. They're running out of strategy. What they're trying to push now is Fujitsu. This is a good group of guys. There's no question about this. They sell Spark technology, not Sun technology. Their technology didn't come from Sun. It came from a guy named Andy Heller, who was a guy that invented IBM's RS6000, the wrist chip. Andy did a job at IBM, but just didn't quite fit in. So they let him go. He started his own company called HAL Computer. Remember HAL in 2001 Space Odyssey? Okay. HAL Computer, and he decided he was going to out-design Sun, so he designed his own Spark chip. But he loved it, so they bought his company and adopted his Spark chip, but they couldn't handle it either, so they fired Andy. And we're designing our Andy's chips, not Mr. McNeely's chips, not designed from Sun. All that went to TI. That's why Sun's out of business. TI couldn't build chips for him. But who is designing and building their own chips? And Fujitsu is not a dual-purpose computing company. Fujitsu is really good at supercomputers. I sell a lot of in Japan. So the chips that they design are designed to do supercomputing. Loading point stuff is great. The SIMD, single instruction, multiple, multiple data stuff is really great. They don't do SAP well. They don't do Sybase well. They, what means compared to the last two architectures left? Okay. The last two architectures on the planet, you're going to be buying Intel from Intel. You're going to be buying Intel from AMD. Or you buying power. That's it. That's just left. I mean, think about it. In fact, I was, I was kind of going through some of my, my uh, presentations from, from 10, 12 years ago. It was kind of interesting because that was right about when Compaq bought digital and tandem and then HP bought Compaq, right? HP first bought Compaq. They had all their Intel stuff, the ProLine stuff they got from Compaq. They had tandem, which was running a chip called MIPS, if you remember that. And they had HP's uh, alpha technology running the alpha chip. HPUX, not HPUX, but true 64 Unix, right? And they're gone. They're gone. And then I keep trying to make the people. Folks, it's over. The architecture game is over. We're down to two. Intel and power. Okay. Yeah, AS400 is right here. Um, now, you know, I have to admit there's still mainframes out there. And although the mainframes are not power architecture, the guys who designed the mainframe stuff up in Poughkeepsie and the guys who designed the power stuff in Austin trade places every six months. So the Austin guys are bringing their technology to Poughkeepsie, and the Poughkeepsie Bride guys bring their technology to Austin. So there are mainframes still out there, and they're still selling, they're still running probably 70% of the world's data, critical data, like my bank account and my, my credit card transactions, put those on a Unix box, right? So. But from a standpoint of general computing, what, commodity computing, that's all that's left. And it has nothing to do with the technology, although both are great technology. We sell a lot of both of these. It's not about that. It's about being able to ship tens of millions of chips so you can afford to do R&D. You can afford to do building fabrication plants. You can afford to do marketing and sales. If you can't sell tens of millions, you can't get there. 100,000 chips a year, Itanium doesn't even sell that many. I know much about Itanium. It's, it's just about at the end of its life. They have another year and a half to go on a government contract. HP paid Intel $10 billion to keep building Itanium.